Okay, welcome to percentages higher. And we are going to zoom through this. So we are going to use the multiply method. If you're not sure about that, please look at the percentages foundation one. Okay, so in January 2007, the population of Canada was 32 million. 7 million of these Canadians spoke French as their first language. Express 7 million as a percentage of 32 million. So we're just going to do 37, 7 over 32, and we're going to multiply that by 100. <clears throat> And this is going to give us 21.875 to one decimal place. This is 21.9. So it's between January 2007 and January 2009, the population of Canada increased by 4%. Increased 32 million by 4%. By An increase of 4% is we're actually 104%. As a multiplier, that's 1.04. So 32 times 1.04 is going to give me 33.28. So correct to the nearest million, remember this is still billion, I'm going to have 33 million. Okay, question two. Cheng invested $3,500. At the end of year one, interest of $161 was added to his cap. Express 161 as a percentage. So again, 161 over 3,500 times by 100 is going to give us our percentage times 100. So I'm going to get 4.6%. Then it says, Leanne invested an amount of money at an interest rate of 5.2%. Remember, interest, 5.2%, it means we're adding on. It's 105.2%. After one year, she received interest of $338. Work out the money she invested. Okay, so even though I've done this, however, this doesn't really um, matter for this question. If her interest was three, three, eight dollars, that means that three hundred and thirty-eight dollars is equivalent to five point two percent. So I want to find a hundred percent. The easiest way to do this is find one percent. How do I find one percent? I divide by five point two. So I'm going to divide by five point two. So three, three, eight. Divide 5.2 is 65. Now I need to find 100%. Well, if I have 1% and I want 100%, what am I going to do? I'm obviously going to multiply by 100. So if I multiply by 100, I'm going to get 6,500. So there's my answer. Okay, so nice and easy again. We're going to do express this percentage, 266. Divide 760. I'm going to have 0 0.35 times 100 is 35 percent it says cassia spends 204 a week on rent 204 is 30 percent so that means 204 is equivalent to 30 percent okay so again you can find one percent by dividing by 30 and then you can find a hundred percent by multiplying by a hundred okay so if we divide by 30 i get 6.8 times 100, I get 680. Okay, so this is just using like a direct proportion method. Okay, question four. So, um, Dalipa buys a painting for 675. Later, he sells it and makes a percentage profit of 12%. Work out the price for which he sells the painting. So if he's made a profit of 12%, that means we've had an increase of 12%. So actually it's 112% which using our multiplier method, we're going to do 675 multiplied by 112 as a decimal is 1.12. So this is going to give me 675 times 1.12, which is 756. So nice and easy free marks. Okay. Then we have, um, she sells a car, she makes a loss of 2162. Her percentage loss is 23%. So she makes a loss of 2162, and that is equivalent to 23%. Okay? So how am I going to find, work out the price for which she sells her car? So, okay, so first of all, let's always find 100%. It just makes life easier. So divide by 23, and then we need to times by 100. So if we divide by 23, we get 1%. If we divide by 100, we get 100%. So what is that equivalent to? So 2162. If I divide it by 23 times 100 
That means it originally cost 100% is 9,400. However, what did she sell the car for? Remember, she made a loss of this. So now I'm going to do 9,400 minus 2,162, which is 7,238. Okay, next one. Part C, Lynn bought a computer that had a value of 1,500. At the end of each year, the value of her computer depreciates by 40%. That's a decrease of 40%. 100 take away 40% is 60%. Um, calculate the value of her computer at the end of three years. So, 1,500 multiplied by 60% is a multiplier, 0 0.6. Remember, the multiplier is just a decimal. And three years. We know this is compound, not interest, but depreciation. So 1,500 times 0 0.6 to the power of 3 is 324. That's terrible, really. So her computer that was worth $1,500 is now, three years later, only worth $324. Okay, question five. So, a clothes shop has a sale. In the sale, normal prices are reduced by 12%. The normal price of a shirt is £30. Work out the sale price. If it's reduced by 12%, 100 take away 12 is 88%. So, that means I want 88% of the amount. So, 30 times our multiplier, 0 0.88 equals... 30 times 0 0.88 is 26.4. And remember, we're dealing with pounds, so we're going to put 0.40, two decimal places. And it says the price of the coat is reduced by £9 in the sale. So it means it's been reduced by £9 in the sale. That means £9 is equivalent to 12%. The normal price of the coat, this is going backwards now. Okay, so we're going to find 1% by dividing by 12. And then we find 100% by multiplying by 100. So 9 divided by 12 times 100 is 75. Okay. So, the original price of the coat is £75. Okay, question six. Yin eats some yoghurt. The yoghurt contains 192 milligrams of calcium. This is 16% of the total amount of calcium that he should have each day. Okay, so this is saying 192 is equivalent to 16%. Remember, we have to read the question and write our mathematical sentence. So, I need to find 100%. How do I do that? Divide 16 multiply by 100 because if I divide by 16 I get 1% if I multiply by 100 I get 100% so now my calculator 192 divided by 16 times 100 is 1200 so that means he should have 1200 milligrams a day okay question seven Pat drops a ball onto a wooden floor the ball bounces to a height which is 26% less than the height from which it is dropped okay if we're 26% less it's a decrease of 26% 100 minus 26% is 74%. So if he drops the ball from a height of 85 centimetres, a decrease of 26% is the same as multiplying by 0 0.74. 85 times 0 0.74 is 62.9 centimetres. And it says, Pat drops the ball from a different height. It first bounces to a height of 48.1. Calculate the height from where it dropped. Okay, so this type of one, I'm thinking to myself, we don't know the height, but when we multiplied it by 0 0.74, it came to 48.1. Okay, so what am I going to do? 48.1 divided by 0 0.74 is going to give me 65. So my answer is 65. Okay, question 8. The price of 1 kg of silver on the 1st of January was 607. By the 1st January 2015, the price of the silver had decreased by 9.4%. Work out the price of 1 kg of silver on the 1st of January 2015. Okay, so it decreased by 9.4%. So that is, if we have 100 and we take away 9.4, we're going to get 90.6% is actually of the amount we have left. As a multiplier, this is 0 0.906. So this equals 607 times 0 0.906. So this was 549.942. It wants it to the nearest dollar, $550. Between the 1st of January 2010 and the 1st of January 2015, the price of one tonne of copper decreased by 20%. 
If it's a decrease of 20%, we're actually finding 80% of the amount. Ah, but remember, read the question. I think it's just all semantic, right? It says the decrease is this. So it means 1,320 is equivalent to 20%. Now, this one's an easy one, because I could divide by 20 and then multiply by 100. However, how many 20% goes 100%? Five. So I can just multiply it by five. One, three, two, one. Okay, just because I use a set method, it's only just to show the easiest way, but we need to be comfortable with manipulating number. So the price is actually 6,600. Question 10. Liam invests 8,000 in a savings account for four years. The savings account pays compound interest at a rate of 4.5% for the first year. And to remember, this is interest, okay? So we're increasing. This is 104.5%, and this becomes 102.75%. Work out the value of Liam's investment at the end of four years. So that means he had 8,000. For the first year, it was 104.5%. As a multiplier or a decimal, it was 1.045 for the first year. Then, if you think that's like one year, so to the power of one. Then for all the other years, it's 102.75%, um, which is 1.0275 as a multiplier. And it's four years in total, so this must be to the power of three. So once I've worked that all out, 8,000 times 1.045 times 1.0275 to the power of 3. So I get 9068.84, and we'll leave it as that to two decimal places. It doesn't tell us to round. Okay. It then says, Max invests some money in a savings bond. The saving bond pays interest of 2% per year. Okay, so it's an increase of 2% each year, which is 102%. At the end of the first year, his savings bond is worth this. Okay, so we put some money in, we multiplied it by 1.02, because it was only one year, and we got 5763. I've written my mathematical sentence, so I'm going to do 5763 divided by 1.02, and I get 5650. So that means my original price was 5650. Okay, question 13. He invests 6,000 for five years. So we know whatever it is, it's to the power of five. Okay, the investment gets compound interest of X percent. Okay, so I'm just going to say X to the power of five. At the end of five years, the investment is worth 8029.35. Okay, so something to the power of five equals that. So first of all, that means that X to the power of five equals... 8029.35 divided by 6,000. So x to the power of 5, so 8029.35 divided by 6,000, okay, is 1.338225. So now I'm going to do the fifth root. So x equals the fifth root of all of that, okay, that's what I'm putting into my calculator. So the fifth root, shift. Um, I think this one. Yep, the fifth root of the answer is equal to 1.05999. Dot, 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 dot. Okay? However, this isn't my value of x because remember, we always use the multiplier method here. So, this is my decimal. This is my decimal thing. So, if I now multiply this by 100, I'm going to get my percentage. So this is 105.999%. So that means, it didn't say if it wants um, a whole number or a decimal place, but technically, this we know is an increase of 5.999%. So we could either say 6% to one significant figure, or even if we did decimal places, etc., it's still round. Maybe we could put 5.9%.